welcome everybody. I'm so happy that you're here. And I want this to be a time when you know that you're not alone. It's going to be, we're going to have a time where we can share ideas. I'm going to have just a little exercise for you to do and get some paper and a pen. I'm going to do some exercises, ask some questions that I think will really help you if you have a pen and paper to jot things down. You don't need to take notes. You're gonna get the replay of this, but just in case you wanna write things down because when there's power, when we write things down. So welcome. And I would love to, for you to introduce yourself, say hi. Um, I'd love to personally welcome you. I do have a headset on today because my for those of you that ju just jumped on my audio, you couldn't hear it unless I was wearing my headset. So I look like I'm <laughs> gonna fly a plane. I feel very official here. Um, so welcome to this holiday webinar. I'm just gonna jump in because there is so much stuff we're gonna talk about today. And um, it's gonna be very interactive, which I love to do because I love to connect personally with you. And I'm just so, grateful that you're here. And I think that it's going to be really helpful to be intentional today and to plan out what we want this all to look like this year, because it is a holiday season like no other, right? It is just going to be very different for so many of us. And we're going to talk about how to create a holiday season with your tweens and teens. That makes it different too, doesn't it? As they get older, things begin to change and your kids are experiencing a lot of stress and anxiety and different, different things that they're going through right now, which changes things and then family and if you're not seeing family. So we want this holiday season to be less stressful and we wanna be able to make it really special and really meaningful especially this year. And perhaps this year is going to be the best holiday season that we ever have had because we're forced to really simplify. So we're going to find ways to be creative today. We're going to share your ideas because it's not just me here. I mean, yes, I'm going to be talking about these things and teaching you some things and sharing some tips. And, and I know it's all going to be helpful, but you also have awesome ideas that I love for you to share. So jump in and also say me too. And, um, and we're just going to all share this experience. And there's going to be such a wealth and abundance because you have come to this call. So I'm just thrilled that you're here. I'm so glad I get to connect with you. All right. So I want to honor, I just have to say this up front, I want to honor your unique situation. I'm going to move over my notes a little bit so I can see, I'm going to see you. Hi, Zena. Hi, Lauren. So glad to see you here. So each of you has a different situation. Some of you are here and you're still going to see some family. And maybe nobody has a compromised health issue and you feel comfortable with that and you're okay with that. Others of you are coming here and it's very different where you're not gonna be seeing family this year, where you are not comfortable with it or maybe there's health issues in your family and, you, and there's, there's a sadness to that. And maybe some of you are not seeing family and that's actually a relief because some of our family, it's a little complicated around the holidays. So there's all kinds of different experiences that, that you're in different circumstances that you're having. So I want us all to kind of just like, okay, everybody here, it's gonna be unique. So when you share that this is a safe place where you can share how you're doing your holidays, and I know that we're all here, you know, some of you are celebrating Christmas, some of you are celebrating Hanukkah, some of you are from different countries where you're not celebrating Thanksgiving. So we're all coming from unique, unique places. Okay, so I want to ask you a few questions and I would love for you to check in in the chat because I wanna hear what it is that you're going through so I can actually tailor this even for your unique situation. So are you 
social distancing from your family. And hi, Kathy, I'm so glad that you're here. And hi, Teresa, I'm sorry, insurance company called. Um, yeah, it's great. So 14 year old son and we're social distancing. Okay, good to know. And um, hi, Elena, are you, the question is if you just came here, are you social distancing? Not social distancing, but we do see each other pretty regularly. Hi, Michelle. Okay, are you hosting? Do you normally host or are you hosting this year and you're not used to doing that? Social, Anja, am I saying your name right? Good to see you, Scylla, good to have you here too. Amanda, hi. I was going to host my side of the family, but now I'm only hosting. Yes, I love this. Keep dealing, the only um, distancing. Yeah, immediate family. Kathy, hosting some. Okay, thank you. That's your social distancing. Okay, not hosting as usual, yes. Um, are you happy about it? You can say happy. Are you feeling sad about this? Yes, you're sad about it. Yes, put your feelings in there too. Happy, Amy, happy, yes. Who's sad? Sad for our son. Yep, who's lonely and sad to not be seeing grandma. Are you looking forward to it? Missing extended um, family. Thank you, Kathy. Yeah, sad for my parents. I mean, yeah. Um, are you dreading it? Here, who's dreading it? I mean, some of you may be showing up and you're like, I am burned out. And I wanna say good for you for showing up because this could have been just one more thing that you felt like, oh, I don't wanna to go to that. That's just one more thing on my list of to do. So I just wanna affirm each and every one of you for coming to this call and making time because this is gonna be nourishing. That is my, my hope and prayer, De uh, dreading. Um, <laughs> Elena, I was here an hour early because a lot of you, I normally do it at 12 noon and I did it at one today. Don't ask me why. I think there was some reason. Amy, dreading having to balance work and holiday with a preteen. Yeah, I mean, and especially, right, when your kids have been home, when you're working at home, when there's messes everywhere, when, you know, the kids are e-learning. I mean, there, there is a lot on top of it, right? So that can just feel like one more big thing. It was interesting because I was talking to Jen, many of you know Jen, she's behind the scenes and she's the COO here at Moms of Tweens and Teens and a huge blessing to me. And she was saying how one of the things that she was talking to one of her family members about is that, that fear of missing out on a memory and I thought that was really a whole different perspective that I haven't thought about. It's like that sadness that, you know, we're making memories and it's gonna look different and we're gonna miss out on that, especially those of us that have elderly parents and we're not gonna to get to see them this year. And then I also want to ask you, what is one challenge? Thank you, Zena, I see you're sad due to the problems with kids, yeah. Um, it can be very complicated with our families and, and the holidays can bring up loss and they can bring up excitement and it can bring, and you know what, we can feel all of these feelings all at once. We can feel happy and excited about one thing. We can miss a family member that's passed away. It can all be like this big ball all together, right? So wherever you're at, you're not alone. And this, I hope is going to help you to not feel alone today, okay? So what is one, yeah, Elena, definitely mixed. Um, what is one challenge you're having right now? And remember, if you have a question, you can put it in the Q&A that we will get to it after, after the workshop, okay, at the very end. So I wanna just read a few things that I have, the moms I've been talking to. This is a little, just a little bit of how it would be different for them. One mom's making a turkey for the first time. Never had to make a turkey because she's always gone to mom's house and now she's gonna to have to make a turkey. One mom, she's used to doing this cookie bake-off. There's not gonna be any cookie bake-off this year. Um, another, another mom, her, 
she had a grandmother that passed away from COVID and just the loss and sadness of that and not having grandma be there is a, just really a loss. And they're all grieving and mourning and then she can't be with her parents. So there's so many different things and we're gonna be talking about, about how to navigate all of this. So um, let me see, I talked about that already. <laughs> So all of this craziness is why I decided to do this because I was really hearing from so many of you and I thought, you know what, we got to get on here. We got to get intentional and think about how we can create joy for ourselves and how we can come up with some unique ideas and ways to create that connection and make memories and even new traditions to replace what we're not able to do this year. So these are some of the things that I want you to think about, about how we can make this, this holiday season really meaningful. So having real connection with our family that we do have there, that we do have with us. How are we gonna have fun when a lot of the things that we are used to doing, we're not gonna be doing this year? Or how are we gonna simplify? So we're gonna talk about some of those things because. Who wants to simplify? That's one thing, boy, I'm excited about doing. And how can we let go of that guilt? You know, that guilt that we can often feel. And especially when our kids aren't, you know, they may be struggling. And so we feel like we have to have it look a certain way, right? And we feel a lot of that pressure. We got to make up for what we don't, our kids aren't going to have this year. So there can be this guilt and pressure. And we put that on ourselves, other Christmases or Hanukkahs or Thanksgivings, right? We can put so much pressure on ourselves. So how can we give ourselves permission? And I want to talk about how you can do things that are going to actually fill you up. And we're going to talk about the importance of why that is so important. Okay. So in this workshop, I'm just going to give you this just kind of broad overview. We're going to talk about how to create a vision and how to be intentional around that and how to also create a vision that is our tweens and teens are gonna wanna be a part of, because that's part of it. They can be wanting to be on their phones or they don't wanna hang out with us. And so how can we create this vision with them and make these memories and have fun together? And then I'm gonna talk about some tools and tips about how you can simplify and let go of some of those things and some ways to organize yourself. And then we're going to talk about some really creative, unique ideas of ways that we can build connection in our family and memories and how to kick that resentment. Who here can feel some resentment creeping in around the holidays because you feel like you're the one that has to do so many things? And how do you get your family on board and everybody helping and working together so you don't feel that resentment? So I'm going to share a couple of tricks and tips with how to do that. And then how to deal with family, with those family conflicts and those breakdowns that can happen in our family. So that's what we're going to be talking about. So I hope, I just have to say, I hope you got your holiday planner, which it is 20 pages long. And my daughter did this, my 21 year old daughter, isn't it beautiful? And the colors are really nice. But so we're going to use this just a little bit, but I hope that you took time to really check this out because it's got, you don't have to print them all out, but just what's going to be helpful for you. And even at the end, there's a bunch of gift guides and, and links in there to help you with your, with your gift giving. So we will be talking a little bit more about that as well. Okay, so there's five ways. We're just going to dive right in. So number one is give yourself permission to simplify and say no. Now, as I'm, as I'm going through this, I'm just seeing little bits and I want to, hi, Emily, hi, Michelle, hi, Kathy, hi, Beth. I want to read all of these. I just noticed that pulling because I want you to know you matter to me. But since I'm doing this, I just am so happy to see that you, you jumping in and saying you're sorry for Amy's loss and that kind of thing. So keep doing that, you know, where you feel like you can just be chatting while I'm going along. And if something comes up for you, just share that. And so 
you know, and jump in and you can co-voyage together, okay? So going back, I just wanted to insert that. So we've heard this before, right? We've all heard simplify, give yourself permission to say no. It's nothing new, but it's not easy for us. It is one of the hardest things I still have to do. And I'm very practiced at this. I am a recovering people pleaser. Who is here? I'm a recovering people pleaser. And I'm always, you know, I'm always thinking, I, you know, you hit me at the right moment where I have a lot of energy and I'm like, sure. And then the next day I'm like, right? I'm like, why did I say yes to this? I do not want to be doing this. And so it's not easy. And in, in theory, it sounds good. But we all know that if we're saying yes to something that we don't really want to be doing, that doesn't really matter to us, we're saying, we're saying yes to that and we're saying no to the best, to what can even be better. And not to mention how we can end up saying yes to things that we feel resentful about. And I want you to not underestimate the power of simplicity to make room for more connection. Because I will tell you, I look on Facebook sometimes and I would see somebody taking this beautiful vacation with their family. And I'm like, oh, I wish I could go on that. I wish I could afford that this year. I can't do that. You know, boy, they look like they're having so much fun. And that's all true. And it's wonderful when we can take a vacation like that. But we can take a vacation together and we can be totally disconnected. What really matters is connection. And, and so much of that comes out of just those simple things. It doesn't have to be fancy, but we get all caught up in trying to make things a certain way and we miss out on the best. We just miss out on the beauty of just being together. So who here puts a lot of pressure on themselves? Do we have any perfectionists in the group? <laughs> because where you just find like you put a lot of pressure on yourself because you just want it to be really special. You know, yes, yes. Um, uh, I hope I, Anja, Anja, yeah, you're saying definitely yes. So. I historically have done that to myself and I still can fall into that trap. Who here feels bogged down with doing those things that really don't make you happy? You just feel like, I really don't wanna do that this year. I don't like it. Now, some of us, we know we don't have to do it, right? Cause it's changed. But for some of us, we still feel that pressure or maybe you feel like you have to make up you have to make it up to your kids because they're having a hard time or because they're not going to be with grandma. So then we're stressing ourselves out around that. So there are some real traps that we get ourselves into. One of the biggest traps, and maybe you're going to be able to know what the guess what this is, is yeah, the guilt is real. Thank you. Thank you, Amy, for saying that. Yes, Kathy, I still do being the pleaser. I am so excited that we are just going to say no to that. I'm going to tell you why it's so important so we can have that little, you know, that planting that little seed that we can remind ourselves. We should ourselves all the time. <laughs> just, I mean, don't we? It's just terrible. And I don't know that we ever totally stop doing this. I think we think, oh, we're just going to arrive one day. But it's a, just a, we always, it's becoming more conscious of those internal, you know, those, those messages that can go on in our head. Like, I should be doing that. Like, I grew up in a family where we were fancy. And I think that that's how a lot of us, we grew up and we were using the silver. If you had silver, we used the silver on Christmas. And so I always feel a little, we got rid of the silver and we sold it. <laughs> and I feel a little bad about that. I feel badly like I'm dropping the ball, you know, I'm not. And some of us love that and that's awesome. 
but I don't really love that. That just seems like a lot of work to me. So I don't do it, but there's that pull that I should be doing that. I'm not making it as much as special. I should bake those cookies. I should have the family over. Maybe you're going through this. I should have the family over because they wanna come over even though I'm worried about COVID and I really don't wanna have them over. Some of you are experiencing that or they should be having me over and not be so worried about COVID. We kind of have, we can have both extremes from all the moms I'm talking to. I should be able to do all that. What that mom can do all this, she look at the way, I hear this a lot too, like look at her, how does she do all that? And I can't seem to do that. What is wrong with me? So we do that or I should, and I'm struggling with this this year, I will confess, I'm gonna simplify my gift giving. And I feel badly about that because historically my kids, you know, I love to give gifts, but you know, it's not in the budget right now. And so I'm gonna need to say, you know, we're gonna simplify, but part of me feels badly about that, but I wanna stay within our budget. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm worried, like, will they be as happy? Like wanting to keep them happy, right? So here are some, and I want you to think about that. Yeah, what's wrong with me? Thank you, Amy, all the time. Yeah, so here are some examples of some things that we can let go of, okay? And some things that I've been hearing from moms and some choices that I'm making. One mom I talked to this morning, she has decided they're not having turkey on Thanksgiving. <laughs> She's making steak for her sons and she's making salmon for her and her daughter. She said, we don't like turkey. We've never liked turkey. None of us usually put it on our plates and we're not being with family this year. So we are not gonna do turkey. Now, for some of you, it's like, no, I wouldn't do that. But for her, that's one of the things she's decided to make okay. Letting a worn out tradition go. Something, maybe you have this tradition and your kids are getting older and they don't really enjoy it anymore. And it's kind of a bummer, but it's just not working and you find yourself frustrated. We were talking about that. Like whose kid right now does not wanna decorate the Christmas tree with you? I mean, that can be a very real thing when you have tweens and teens. All of a sudden you're like, find you're decorating the Christmas tree by yourself. So what do you do about that? Um, I have some ideas. Um, and who, yes, no fun anymore. Yeah, you feel lonely. We can feel lonely. Um, maybe you want to say no to shopping in the stores this year and just order everything online and just make it super easy and not feel guilty about that. That's another thing we can feel guilty. I know I can, like I should be going to the stores, but you know what? It's going to be easier just to do it online. Is that okay? Can I give myself permission around that? Only sending Christmas cards or holiday cards to those that I receive them from. That's another thing. Um, another mom was sharing with me that she normally has a bake-off with her family and she hosts it and she hates it and she doesn't feel like she can no say no to her family. But she's going to take that risk and say no this year and she's going to be really relieved because she hasn't wanted to do it but she doesn't want to disappoint anybody or be on the receiving end of having of having the family members be mad at her if she says no. I mean, who can end up feeling that way? This is a fun one. And, and Jen had a great idea for this. Um, not doing Elf on the Shelf. <laughs> who, who does Elf on the Shelf still? And she had this great idea that she heard of having your kids do Elf on the Shelf for each other. So they get to take turns and hide Elf on the Shelf. And rather than you having to do that, I did have one friend, I saw her Facebook one, one year and she had duct taped the elf on the shelf to the wall. It was, it was so funny because she, <laughs> she didn't want to do it. Um, and then also I was talking to somebody, they do Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and they're going to say no to one or the other and not put that pressure. We are really good at enduring, aren't we? We are like masters at enduring things that we don't really enjoy and putting all that pressure. So I want us to do a little exercise right now, okay? And this is a, who's a Maria uh, Forleo fan? Do we have any Marie Forleo fans out there that is wa are watching? 
I, oh, those elves get lazy. That's so funny. Um, I, she does this thing. Okay. So what I want you to do is I want you, if you want to close your eyes and I want you to put your hand on your heart and I want you to take a couple deep breaths. And I just want you to think about what came to your mind as I was saying those things that you should yourself into doing. So I want you, and you can write this down if you want to do it. So what's coming to your mind right now? So think about that. And I want you to take a couple breaths. And when you think about doing that, whatever that is, maybe it's even baking those Christmas cookies. Maybe you don't really enjoy that. And I want you to think about that. And I want you to Think about how you feel in your body. Do you find yourself expanding or do you find yourself contracting and like getting like tense? So just noticing, is it bringing you joy and making you feel lighter? And sometimes, when we take the should away, we can find out that we really do like it. That's the crazy thing too. Just like, I don't have to do this. I actually have a choice. Hmm. If I can say no to it, if I knew I could say no to it. See, if we can't say no to something, we really can't fully say yes to it. So maybe you think, okay, if I didn't should myself, or I'm not putting that pressure that I have to do it, maybe I do want to do it. So I want you to think about how did that feel? And maybe you want to share that, that um, Elena, I'm luckily that they finally learned some manners. That's so funny. So think about that. And I want you to share what do you, what came, everything is figure outable. Amen, Emily, I love that. She gets me fired up. So if you don't know Marie Forleo, you gotta watch her, she gets you fired up. Um, so Cher, what can you let go of? Like what, when you, when you were thinking about that, something you dread doing, and maybe you're not ready to let go of it yet. Maybe you're like, uh, I don't know. They'll be so disappointed if I don't do if I don't do it. So I'm just not sure if I can even let it go. But what's one thing that if you could let it go, would you like to let go? Maybe that's right where you're at. Or maybe it's like realizing, hmm, I don't know that I like to do that. Or maybe it's something that you you have to let go of because you don't have a choice and you're just thrilled about it. Like maybe that difficult relative isn't coming over this year and that's a huge relief. So, well, this year holiday travel. Yeah, too taxing to drive 18 hours. So that makes it simplify all the extra gifts that they don't, that they don't ask for, but I get in the way and I kill myself over. Yes, that's a great one. So we need boundaries. Right? We need boundaries. We need to give ourselves permission to say no. Why? Because we want to model boundaries to our kids. Because when we don't say no, we feel resentful and resentment comes in. And because our kids sense it, if we're not joyful. And a lot of times it's kind of funny when you start setting boundaries and saying, hey, and it doesn't have to be like, no, it can be, let's, you know, this year, let's do something different. This, you know, we're not going to be with family this year. So let's try something new and what, and including your family in that, what might we do? Or, you know, I'm noticing I'm, I'm baking the cookies by myself and nobody's really wanting to do that. So I think we'll, we'll do something different, different this year. I'm going to say no to that. They might go, oh, no, 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 I'll help, right? And they might want to, they, then they might want to jump in. So just think about those things. And that leads into stuffing the stockings with trinkets. 
Yes, Anne, the stockings. Um, yeah, I love it. So just think about that, okay? Uh, number two, we're gonna move in. So we, we think about what we wanna say no to, what we can give ourselves permission so that we can make space for more of that great stuff. So I have done this so many times in workshops with moms as far as and groups that I have led with creating a vision. And I have found, I started doing it in my own life and I was shocked at the difference it made when I just wrote it down. Because so often, and I'm not a really great plan ahead person, I kind of fly by the seat of my pants. And that's kind of my tendency, I've, I've grown in that. And I would want to do things, but I would never write it down. And so I would be on autopilot. And before you know it, Christmas is over. And I'm like, oh, we never did that. So what I do now is I write it down. And that's why in your planner, you have space to really write down. And there's some create family fun ideas in there. But to write down what you really want to do, like what would be fun for you to do. And then in there, I don't know if you saw, there's one for your kids that um, they can fill out, like what's their number one gift that they want. And what I like about that is that ask them what activities they want to do. So you can include them in that and have a discussion and then make a plan around it and even schedule it in. Because if we don't do that, it just goes by and then we realize we've never done it. So I want you to think about, because we, especially this year, because we can't normally do what we would do, right? On a normal Christmas, Hanukkah, holiday time. So we have to get creative, even more creative and intentional. So what would an ideal holiday look like to you? I want you to think about that. And these questions are in your planner. Think about that. What would make it fun for you? What things would you want to do that would bring you joy? And then I want you to think about how you can take care of yourself because it really does get down to that. And that feeds into the saying, no, it's taking care of ourselves, having boundaries so that we can make more space for that good stuff. Because if we're saying yes to what we really don't enjoy, then we're sucking joy out of those things that bring more joy, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, so here's the thing. We have these expectations of what the holidays are supposed to look like, right? We have this, you know, and I'm actually, I'm excited about, about this holiday season. And um, I'm excited about it because I feel like I I need a little pick me up and I really have planned how to be intentional and how to simplify things and not how to overdo, which I, and, and actually we're getting carry out <laughs> Thanksgiving dinner. We're ordering the whole thing. Um, and, and somebody, I was, uh, I was uh, with some people and um, they were saying, oh, can you believe some people get carry out Thanksgiving dinner? I would never do that. And I just kind of, you know, sat there quietly. But that would be an area where maybe in the past I would have felt guilty. Like, oh, maybe I should be. But I'm like, hallelujah. It's a place that's awesome. And I am, I'm going to make fun food. You know, I'm going to make the appetizers I love to make. And I'm going to do like the fun stuff and let all that other stuff that my family loves, you know, somebody else can make that's really good at it. So what would you like to do? So I want, to, I want you to think about that. So here's some, here's some ideas, okay? And I want you, um, I want you, gosh, I want to read everything that you're, that you're writing down. So I want you to think about some of these ideas that I'm sharing and then share some things that you love, okay? Because this is, you have so much wealth. Um, of knowledge here and things that work for you. So just kind of as I'm saying things, you can share your ideas. So I was just talking to a mom and not only is she not going to be with family, but she has just gone through a divorce. So she's like, and she has boys and she's like, what can I do? And I said, we were brainstorming and I said, hmm, maybe you could just take a walk up to Starbucks because our Starbucks is open here and get a coffee in the morning with them. 
She's like, wow, that would be really fun. Sale is simple. We make it very complicated. Then somebody was um, saying that if they do fa forced family fun. Jen was actually sharing that she heard this. And what they do is they have the whole family get in the car and they go to a forest preserve. And so they're in the car together and then they go to a forest preserve and they walk. And they get to talk and they get to be together and get away from the cell phones and the technology. Another thing that we've loved to do, and it's cold here, but we do wiffle ball. We also have dance-offs, which we just started last year that are hilarious. And I like hurt my, I hurt my um, wrist. It was, I was like, what did I hurt? <laughs> I was like on the floor and then everybody judged and they gave, you know, and who the winner was. And it was such a playful, funny way to do things. And I know some of you are on the TikTok, maybe you can have TikTok competitions, you know, really thinking about being, bringing play in. Another, have a puzzle for everybody to work on. Play music, like that brings joy. If your family's kind of dead, and you feel like everybody's kind of slogging along and dragging, you know, uh, low motivation, low energy, who's experiencing that? Where so many of us are and just low energy, music. Music changes the energy and the mood in your home. Have your kids say what, uh, pick a favorite dish to make, right? Um, look for drive-by light shows. I just found out, I was talking to Jen, there's quite a few in my area. And I thought, well, that would be a fun thing to do since so many places are closed. Another mom I was talking to said, they're actually going to Florida because they're not seeing any family. So they have decided they're gonna get a place in Florida and go as a family and kind of quarantine together there, but they will be somewhere where they can be on the beach. Watch movies. Um, play a board game. There's just so many things that we spend time having. If you're married, having coffee with your husband before the start of the day, that's, or go for a walk with him. Or one thing that I used to do, maybe I'll do it this year, is Christmas Eve day, I would get together with friends very early in the morning to go for a run. We would get together at 6.30 or 7 in the morning, which sounds like, wow, really early but it would lay the whole, like the beginning of the day and it would fill me up. And then I could go into my family, you know, and feel filled up rather than depleted. And it really changed the whole day. Also talk to your kids because when you ask for their input about what would be fun for them, the chances that they're going to have buy-in and they're going to want to do those things. So say, what, since it's different, let's talk about some fun things that we, we could do. What would be fun for you? They might not answer, because some of you I know are going through that right now. But say, think about it and let me know. We want to invite versus control, OK? We want to invite. We also want to, one of the reasons it's so important that we think about what we don't wanna do and what we wanna do is because then we bring this positive energy into our home that's fun and playful and our family would rather be with us. Like it's, it's attractive, right? Than walking around and, and, and being resentful and focusing on those negative things. Play and connection are two of my mantras that I have. Bring my playful self. Some of us, we, we forget how to play. So try on different things and try to bring that playfulness. Even when you're getting, trying to get your kids to help out or to do things, sometimes we try to control things and say, get in the car, get in the car, you're coming, you're coming, right? We try to force and push and control and tweens and teens can vary, they're, they're big resistors and that usually doesn't work. But if I'll say, come, come on a walk with me, come on. Oh, I want to be with you. I want to be with you, you know, in a playful way. Sometimes I'll go, oh, okay, mom, right? So just try different things. Roadblocks with entire family on Zoom. Love that. Love that. Okay, how, Anja, how do I get my kids away from screens? Okay. Excellent, put that in the Q&A and we're gonna talk about it afterwards, okay? Put it in Q&A because if I'll lose it in the chat. So make sure all, if you have any questions like that, put it in the Q&A. 
Okay, so that was number two. So thank you for sharing all the, oh, paint by numbers. I love that. Oh my gosh, would that be fun? See, that is a great, a snowball fights. Yes, I love that. That is paint by numbers. I think maybe I'm gonna do that this year. Um, I have two grandkids too, for those of you that don't know that about me. Um, and they love to paint. So that would be really fun to do with them. See, thinking outside the box, getting creative this year. I just love it. So you can keep family walks, board games. We love apples to apples. My family never gets sick of that. And I have older kids. We still play that. We also play headbands, hilarious. And we also play telestrations where you have to draw. And that's so funny because we have really good artists in our family and really bad artists in my family. <laughs> and my husband's a terrible artist. And we all laugh our heads off because his his pictures are so bad and nobody can guess what they are. So that's a really fun game too. And check out momsoftweensandteens.com because we have games and, the, and they're in the back. We have really fun board games and I really researched the ones that had the, the highest reviews of being fun for the family. So check that out. Okay, number three, I'll keep moving along because I could keep you way too long and I'm looking at the time. Okay. Number three, avoid the make everybody happy trap. Oh my gosh, who feels like they feel like they are they want everybody in the family to be happy? That is such a setup. I will just say it. Your tweens and teens are not going to be happy all the time because they're tweens and teens. Um, you, we just have to kind of like get out of that mindset. We want everybody to be happy and we have to bring our best self and take care of ourselves. So just know they're not going to be happy. And it really is a setup when we do that. We are setting ourselves up for disappointment and we're setting our kids up. And that's when that those power struggles and that control can, you know, get in the way. And then we we're off to the races and then it ends up being messy. And then we get an argument and then we feel horrible, right? So we don't want to do that. It's not our job to make everybody happy. So we all have to say that out loud. It's not our job to make everybody happy. It's our job to make ourselves happy. But we think that's selfish. No, because if we can, if our kid is over here and they're unhappy, that, and I'm not saying we don't get sucked in and that it doesn't impact it, us because it does. But if we're trying to make them happy and we're trying to get them to be happy, then, and they're not, we're gonna get mad. We're gonna feel like mad and that's not good for anybody. So we wanted to lovingly detach from that and instead think about what's gonna make me happy. What's gonna satisfy me and your energy is gonna change and it's gonna impact your family and your kids aren't gonna feel like you're trying to control them because if they feel controlled, they are not gonna give you the satisfaction of being happy. They don't do this really on purpose. It's just the way we are. We don't like to feel forced. Even I don't like for somebody to be trying to tell me how to be, right? We want to let, we want to be more like letting people be wherever they're at and trying to really create that fun and be inviting. We're really good. I call it temperature takers. We want to take everybody's temperature and then we get caught up if everybody isn't happy. And it's really exhausted and it will suck the joy. Okay, moving right along. Number four, ask for help. <laughs> I was talking to a mom this morning. She's like, why is asking for help so hard for us? And I don't really know the answer to that. I think it's pretty complicated, but I would say nine times out of 10, moms will tell me that they really find themselves around the holidays feeling resentful. And, and that's mostly, I mean, there's many different reasons, but mostly because we take so much on and we, to, we feel like we got to do it ourselves. And that kind of feeds into the simplifying where we say no to things that really don't bring us joy. And we, we get just sucked into doing too much. So I want you to really think about how can you ask for help this year? 
give yourself a little ask for help assignment and think about how you can do that rather than just in doing that enduring and we can be such good martyrs like we're doing it all nobody's helping me and and who feels like that <laughs> i certainly can feel like that so what do i do now sorry my headset's kind of so what do i do now i'm going to tell you my trick i write it down i don't have to say it out loud and i don't have to nag and i give everybody a list. I say, what do you want to do? What do you like to do? I like to vacuum. I like to do this. I like to make this food. And then I say what I want. I'll say, I really want us to cook together. I want us all to help out. This is what I need. I need somebody to vacuum. So you talk about it first with your, with your kids. And then you say what you need help with. You will be amazed how people do help you. And and how, how they, because I think we think our kids don't want to help us, but a lot of times they will surprise us. And so we have this wonderful way of doing things where we put it on a sticky note at Moms of Tweens and Teens. So you can have their name and then you have sticky notes of what they're supposed to do. Now, if your kid is gaming and they're not doing what they're going to do, then you can have, and I'm not going to go into that a lot, um, <clears throat> At the end, I'll tell you about the, the boundaries masterclass that can help you with that. But then you can have, say, you have to get that done before you can get, you know, you can have some boundaries where you're encouraging them. Don't do things alone and feel resentful. Ask for help. It's so important. Number five, identify areas, possible breakdowns, because we all have breakdowns. So what are those things that you are scared about, or um, maybe that's too strong of a word, or stressed about, or a breakdown that you can have where, um, for example, mine you see where I would be trying to do everything myself and my husband would be watching football. And I would be in the kitchen doing everything alone and I would not be liking <laughs> that was mine. And I would like, what the heck, right? And then I learned like, Okay, well, that's not helpful to him if I'm walking around all mad at him all day. So I had a talk with him about it and in a good time and said, I really do need help. I want to work with you on this. You know, I feel overwhelmed. I feel stressed. I, you know, taking it out on you and that doesn't feel very good. So how can we partner together so that I'm not feeling like this, that we can have fun together and make it good. You cast a vision for the day and what it can be like. And the chances are there, that you're gonna get your family on board. Complaining never works. We often try to make changes in our family by complaining. Then we're, then we're victims, right? We don't wanna do that. We wanna be inviting and proactive. If you have questions about that, we can talk afterwards because I'm, I'm looking at the time. Here's a problem. You're gonna get this, okay? I included it in what you were gonna get. You can use this formula when blank happens or might happen, I will blank to take care of myself. So when blank happens that you're anticipating or might happen, then I will do this to take care of myself. So here, um, here's a few things, okay? My kids won't decorate the Christmas tree with me, okay? So maybe that's gonna be a little breakdown for you and you're gonna be feeling really bummed out. So you try to force your kids maybe historically, you know, come decorate it and you try to say, then I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna decorate the tree. We're not decorating. If you're not gonna help me, we're not gonna decorate it. And then they say, okay, I don't wanna decorate it. And then you're not gonna decorate it and backed ourselves into a corner. But if you can invite, when is a good time to decorate the tree? I would really love for you to decorate it with me, that's more of an invitation. And, or how can you make it fun for you if your kids aren't gonna decorate the tree with you? This can also happen with family members where maybe your mother-in-law is, she asks, she's quarantined at home and she's not going out. So she wants you to get her groceries and go grocery shopping for her. But she's calling you and you don't have time for that. It's, it feels heavy for you, you don't like it. Well, maybe you could say today doesn't work for me, but I could come tomorrow or I could, I could order that online and have it delivered to you. You know what I mean? Like think creatively. If this happens, 
then what am I going to do? Okay, so figure out how you're going to take care of yourself. Notice when you're feeling resentful and how you can ask for help. Talk to your spouse or your partner or family members or your kids and figure out ways that you can support each other. And remember to breathe and to be in the moment. We also have to extend some grace right now, right? Or speak up when we need to say something or when we don't need something and focus on the positive. Gratitude is so important. Sometimes right now when we're in the house with our kids, we're all trapped, we see everything. We're kind of, the walls are closing in and when our kids go to school, we don't have to see everything. But when they're home, we're seeing if they're not getting on e-learning, right? We're seeing everything and it gets on our nerves and it bogs us down. But if we can just try to focus more on the positive and those things that they are doing, the better it's gonna be. And remember to practice that gratitude. It sounds so cliche, but it's so powerful. And resist overdoing, especially if you're gonna feel resentful, don't do it. Okay, don't do it, especially if you want to try to make people happy and then they're not because that's going to set you up for resentment as well. Okay, so those are, those are just a few things that I had so much more and I can also share my notes with you um, if that would be helpful. Now I do want to say just a few things that will take one minute that I'll get to your questions. Here is how if you're afraid of disappointing somebody this holiday season, a way that we can, uh, one of these strategies that is very powerful is if you set a boundary with somebody, expect that they might guilt you or that you're gonna feel badly about it. Now, what often happens is we say, you know what, this year, it's not gonna work for us to come, okay? Then you're going to have, let's say, we'll blame it on mother-in-laws or, right, or something. Um, even though I love my mother-in-law, she's gone now, but we can say, you know what, that's not going to, and then they're upset, right? We don't want them to be upset. We're so uncomfortable with that. We can say, I know, I know this is so disappointing. You know what, it, this is really hard for me because I don't want to disappoint you. So you're affirming them, then they feel heard versus what we normally do is we get mad at them for feeling the way they feel because we feel badly, right? More like we don't like it, but of course you mean a lot to them. Of course, they're gonna be disappointed. So allow people to feel and just affirm the upset. That's all we have to do. And then they feel heard and we don't have to take it on. I know easier said than done, but you will notice when you just validate how somebody's feeling, it really takes a lot of, of pressure out of the situation. And it kind of calms the whole situation. A lot of times we try to go in and over explain to try to make them not feel upset. And that usually doesn't work either. It actually makes things worse. So just be firm, just say, that's not going to work for me, but this will, okay, we can't do that, but can we do this, right? So you're, you're offering, it's like, okay, we have to say no to this, but what can we say yes to? Well, maybe we can do a Zoom call, or maybe we can, you know, so think outside the box. Also, if boundaries are hard for you, no, we do have a boundaries for those of you that, that didn't come haven't haven't watched it yet there is we have Mott's University it's M-O-T-T-S University there are so many wonderful resources that I add to every day there's free ones there's paid ones and then there's the boundaries master class with for what you get it's not very much money and it's fabulous it's all kinds of stuff it's three three um, different modules that you get that will help you it's not only with um, family members, it's with your kids. How do you set boundaries with your kids? How do you set this with your kids if they're always on their electronics right now? How do you set boundaries with everything that's going on and all the chaos? So um, Jen can even put that um, in the, did you put it in there? 
Um, oh, Jen, thank you for that. Jen, if you can put in the boundaries masterclass for them too, that would be really helpful. And you can check, you can check that out. So I want you to enjoy your holidays. I want them to be filled with joy and connection and making it simple and not taking, not guilt yourself, feeling like you have to do all those things, like making everybody happy, but think about getting filled out, bringing that playful side in, talking to your kids. This is filled with also, I didn't even touch on it, but I broke it down like um, checklists, weekly planning checklist. I have a little schedule on there that can gift giving, see where you can make a list. I always feel like I'm, um, here's for your, my Christmas list. So um, two weeks, you know, um, before, if, if you're um, celebrating Hanukkah, I know that's early this year, you can use this, but one week before, so that you can pace yourself. Like, I didn't even talk about all the time things. Order early, do things now, get it out of the way. So you are, when, you know, deck, put your tree up now if you put up a tree. So um, this is packed with great ideas. You are so welcome, Kathy. So I'm gonna to go to the Q&A. So don't go yet if you don't have to. And I'm so excited how many of you showed up. I love it. I love it. I love it. And you know what? Email me. Seriously, if, I, if you have any challenges you're going through right now, I do do 30-minute complimentary calls. Email me, Cheryl, S-H-E-R-Y-L, at momsoftweensandteens.com. I'd love to talk to you. I'd love to connect with you. Just reach out to me. Just say hi. Share a takeaway that you had, okay? I would love to hear. So I'm going to go to the Q&A. Anja, I hope I'm saying you're right. How do I get my teens away from their screens? I can block their phones from my phone, but oh boy, the world comes to an end. Who is struggling with that? Um, you're so welcome, Lauren. I love all this bonus meetings. Lauren is in the inner circle. And so there's a lot here on the, we have an inner circle. We have a membership group. If you want to be in a group filled with resources, I do an eight week parenting program. It's amazing, isn't it? I mean, Teresa, I am. It's, a, it's like withdrawal. Uh, those of you that are in it, it's such a great group and you get to experience this. You can reach out to me. It's, it's opening again in January. So um, if that's something you would be curious about or interested in, uh, ask me, I'll put you on the wait list too because we can't do this alone. Like we need support and turning, if some of you are really struggling right now, turning that Titanic around, we can't do it alone. We need an outlet. And so many people out there, we're not talking about it. Like, and so this is a really safe place where you can hear me too. And we don't have to feel so alone. That is my mission for you. Okay. So Anja, going back, get the bound. I highly recommend getting the boundaries class because I go into this in great detail. Um, there are, how do you get them away from screens? Boundaries. So I will tell you briefly, you can use my little formula. Hey, Scott, let's say it's Scott, your son's name, Scott. Scott, I'm noticing that you're, you're on your, you're, you're gaming a lot right now. I get it. Like you are connecting with your friends. Like this is the way they're connecting. This is reality. Kids are gaming more than they normally do because they're not getting together with friends as much. So it's a reality. I get it. Like and they play so many of these games are set up where they have to die in order to be able to get off. And so they don't want to get a lower score. So just know that. So we say, get off your devices. We have to understand our kids' games and how they work. And then we have to have that conversation. I'm noticing your gaming. Think about how much time you want to be gaming. Okay. What's your limit? What's your expectation? Get really clear about that. I talk about this in the boundaries. Talk about it with them. I'm noticing, I'm nagging. I hate nagging you. I don't like fighting. I don't wanna do that. Figure it out and then set the limits. And, we, and I talk about, I just had one in the inner circle on technology last week. We also had, there is, um, you can use um, parental controls 
on there, there's different ways to do that. So check that out. You can have it shut down. So I would really say the world will come to an end and just expect that it's okay. They're not gonna like boundaries at this age. And so if we can just normalize that, sometimes I've known kids really have a fit and they throw things and they have a fit because um, they don't like it, that's really hard. But if we can talk about it, if we can ask them what they think, what they think their limits should be, listen, negotiate, all that's in the boundaries. Um, but there is a system and a way that you can do it. And Anja, for sake of time, out to me. And um, Jen just put in when it opens up again. So reach out to me and we can talk more about it. It is, I know it's a, it's a real struggle and it's a re real issue and you can get a handle on it. And it's really important for you to do that and for your son without being rigid, nagging and controlling. You can do it and be proactive and actually have it, not that there won't be you know, some upset there, but there are ways that you can set those boundaries that will be really helpful for him and for you. So thank you for your, thank you for your question. I'm sure you are not the only one and moms on here are very relieved that you asked that because they're going through the same thing. Um, anyway, it's, yeah, Kathy, it's the only time for friends action for my son. We have to understand that too. And I'm telling you, emotional, emotional self-care or, or emotional, um, what do I want to say? Um, mental health and emotional health is really important right now. So we got to think of that, uh, of how we're going to navigate that with our kids and with ourselves. So think about that. I am so grateful that you showed up here and I, I encourage you to take these little exercises. You do have questions that you have in this that you can ask yourself, ask your kids, ask your family, start talking about it. Um, think about how, what you're going to say no to, what you're going to say yes to instead, that'll be more fun and have a wonderful, wonderful holiday. Let's, we, we, the reason it's moms of tweens and teens, I say this is because we have so much power to bring about positive change in our family. It's a blessing and a curse. <laughs> we really do. We bring the energy into our home. Who do I'm always asking myself, who do I want to be? That is such an empowering question. How do I want to show up, right? How am I going to show up? in a way that models for my kids and is inviting and they are inspired by. So think about those things. And um, I just, I love you gals. You matter so much to me and I'm so glad that you're here. And um, yeah, and I hope to see you. I hope to talk to you. I hope to connect with you. So have a great day. And um, I even hate hanging up, but I will, um, Hopefully I'll get to talk to you soon and you will reach out to me. Let me know what your takeaways were, okay? I'd love to hear from you. And I also use them so that the next ones I have, I can use your testimonies for to encourage other moms to come. So, um, so think about that. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving to all of you that are here. I know that Scylla was here. She lives in Hungary and some of you live in other countries. But to those of you that are here that live in the United States, have a wonderful Thanksgiving, whether you eat turkey or pizza <laughs> or salmon or steak, make it a great day. Okay, thanks Kathy for coming. Um, it's so good to be with you. Donalda, great to see you. Anja, so glad you're in the United Kingdom. I love that. Thank you. We have somebody else here that's from the United Kingdom too. So you're not alone. Somebody also from South Africa. Um, Teresa, so glad that you came. Elena. Um, yeah, just thank you. Thank you. I love it. Anne, Zia, all of you. So have a great, um, great rest of the week. Happy Thanksgiving and happy Christmas and Hanukkah or whatever holiday that you are celebrating. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye.